Page 14, a minuet for Mr. Bach's children. A minuet is a type of dance in three, four time. It's similar to a waltz, but it's hoity-toity and fancy, aristocratic type. You can Google minuet and read all about it, the history of it. But there's some interesting things going on in the notation I'd like to point out, because it looks kind of ugly the way it's written. Really, it's all melody. The both hands are sharing the melody. It's going back and forth between the two staves the way they've written it here. So let's just go over. I'm going to take both hands at the same time. First, let's just get the notes. You're going to start out with second finger on D. See the one under the D? That's the counting. One and two and three and. Don't get too confused here. Finger numbers are either above the staff or below the staff. They're not in the middle. That's got to be something else if there's numbers in there, because we got numbers all over everywhere. Huh? So we're starting out on second finger. We're in this position. Then the left hand, you have a G and his third finger. See, the finger number is under the staff. Don't go, the, those numbers in the middle between the staffs are the counting. Don't get confused. So it's here. So we're in this position. The hands are next to each other. Good luck with this. So just get the notes, where you have a D, and then a G, and an A, and a B, and a C, and a D, and a G. You get the idea? In the second line, you have an E, and a C. Remember the numbers under the notes there, in the middle of the staff, or the counting. I'll come back to counting later. Let's get the notes first. Here, and then you have an F sharp there. Just move the F sharp. And then here. The next line is a C, uh, next page really, and then a D, C, and then a B. F sharp there. And the rest of it you've already had. So just, it's, it's the idea of the way they beam them together between the staves, they're just connecting. It's like in the first measure there. You get four eighth notes. They're all beamed together even though they're in different staves. They can do that, obviously, because of, that's what that is. They're simply beaming them the notes together. They didn't have to, but they did. It, the idea is they're, they're beaming according to the beats, and they're just collecting the last... And the menu was one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, and that's kind of what they did. The first beat stands out, and then the others go together. So counting wise, one and two and three and. See, this is where the numbers between the staves come in. Yeah. I wish I really wish they'd leave them out. You don't need them, just count it. Second line. One and two and three. And two and three and page fifteen. One and two and three and one and two and one and one and two and three and one and get the idea. Now don't get the idea that because the notes are beamed, you have to lift up before and after the beams. That has nothing to do with it. The beaming the notes together is strictly for counting. It's for rhythm. It has nothing to do with the articulation and how you play it. They're totally disconnected, so don't associate those together. Then, once you can get the notes and the rhythms, then we can go back and add the articulation. And this is, as I say, go ahead and connect everything unless it says something different. So here, one, connect all this together. One and two. And then you have these st here, staccatos. Nice like wrist staccato. Connect all that. And again, go ahead and connect the notes, even though it's slurred. And so a lot of times you lift up before the slur, don't here, just connect it. So the second line, connect all this to there. Connect all that together. And then here, now it's staccato. And then in the next page, connect it all. I don't know why they gave you a 
a slur there and they did, don't care, connect it. Now actually you can lift up after the slur before you go on, it's the end of a phrase, to just lift up. So there's just a little speck of silence, you're just cutting the half note just a little bit short. And then connect them. So forth. Then you have the dynamics. Well, moderately soft at the beginning. It's all melody, so it's sort of soft. Huh? Whatever that is. Now, you see in the second line, it says grow louder. That means get louder. Gradually increase. Up to moderately loud. You go from moderately soft to moderately loud. There's not a lot of difference between those. They're sort of next to each other. So just go up a little bit. But now you're a little louder than you were at the beginning is all it is. Now you're back down to moderately soft again. When you lift up, go soft. And then in the third line down you get louder again. And you're going to stay that way to the end. Now at the end, the last two measures, there's a RIT, a retardando, it means gradually slow down. There. Speed wise, it's a minuet. Well, there are the different speeds for minuets. It was one, two, three, one, two. You have to learn it slowly and get rid of any hesitations you may have. It's got a flow. People are going to dance to it. You can't be hesitating or they'll fall all over each other. But it, And then eventually you can speed it up to the minuet speed or what you think a minuet should go. I'd like to play this with you very slowly to double check the notes and the rhythms. Not going to do the dynamics, just notes and rhythms and the staccatos. So I'll give us three counts and let's play it together. One. Ready and go and one and There's a duet at the bottom of the page. I'd like to play that while you play what you just played, but we need to speed this up a little faster. And again, I need you to go up an octave. So just pretend middle C goes up an octave, and you put here, here, play it all up here. So I'll give us three counts, and let's play this together. Now keep in mind, the duet part's different than yours, so focus on what you're doing, but listen and stay with the duet. One, ready, and go, and one, two. 